Hello crafty friends, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures. Today, I want to share with you my very first magic iris card. First, I'm using a standard A2 size panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I'm just using Tumble Glass Distress Oxide and the new Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil to create my background. Now, my card design is actually based off of one of the design team projects by Grace for the new Lawn Fawn release. When I saw it as the intro for the Magic Iris, I just completely fell in love with the design because I thought it's just perfect for any kind of celebration. So I decided to just make a similar card myself. And while I'm showing the making of one card in this video, I actually ended up making, I think it was seven cards with just different color balloons, different sentiments, just to have on hand as any occasion cards really, because I think it's just such a fun effect and with the balloons it just works for any person, any age, I think. So I hope you enjoy this one. Now I'm stamping my sentiment. Uh, it's from the birthday before and afters and this will be a birthday card. I'm going to heat emboss it in silver and the circle is actually from the cover plate add-on to the Magic Iris. I just die cut the cover plate out of the uh, cloud panel I just ink blended and now I'm just using the inside circle that the cover plate cuts to add my sentiment. I'm using the Ranger Super Fine Embossing Powder in silver. Off to the side my heat gun was already heating up so it's nice and hot when I'm taking it to the paper. And now I wanted to add something more to this circle so I decided to add confetti. I'm just using this confetti trio just stamping it in Versamark ink, and it's also from the birthday before and afters. Just adding them in sort of a random fashion around the outside edge of my circle. Now I'm just using my reverse tweezers where there's no uh, Versamark ink. And now I'm just melting that embossing powder as well. Off camera, I already die cut my balloons using the new outside in balloons, stitched balloon stackables and the stitched balloon frames. And I really wanted the confetti bits to match in color with the balloons on the card. So I just dug around through my stash looking through my Jelly Roll Stardust glitter pens and I just picked the one that most closely resembled the colors and colored them in. Now I'm just going to adhere my circle to the background panel. I'm using a, a piece from the Really Rainbow pattern paper set. And I'm just using liquid glue to add it down. Off camera I already die cut the pieces for the Magic Iris. I die cut three of the rings out of white cardstock and then use the what Kelly calls the flux capacitor piece to cut the little slits into one of them. Since I'm using the full cover uh, plate for the Magic Iris, you won't really see any of the circles, so I didn't want to waste the pattern, uh, the colored cardstock on that. I just die cut them out of white cardstock and then ink blended the inside of the circle that may be visible when you open the iris. Now I'm just using lots and lots of the anti-static powder tool on all of the pieces of the iris because I just found that it moves a lot better when there's plenty of that on there. Now it's time to assemble the iris. I die cut all the three sausage pieces and I'm inserting them into the coordinating slits. Just making sure it lines up perfectly with the inside ring. And I'm also using just a tiny bit of washi tape to hold it in place because I find it's just easier to assemble the card. In hindsight, just when you assemble it, make sure you don't place the washi tape in the center because you will have to move it to add the stabilizers. Just place it a little bit on the far right or far left, just so you can leave them on until you're done with the assembly. I'm just making sure it's all lined up as it should be. 
And now it's time to add the glue dots. Now, I had never actually worked with glue dots before. Wow, it took me like five minutes to wrestle three glue dots onto the X marks, the spots. If you have any tips on how to adhere them easier, I would love to hear them. I'm using the mini size glue dots and I'm just placing them on the excess that the die cuts. And now it's time to add my second ring just on top making sure it's nice and centered. And pressing down on the glue dots. Now it's time to add the stabilizers to the stitched edges that the die creates, the, the one that also cuts the slits. I'm just moving the washi tape aside to still have some control, but I will be removing them in a bit because they're just in the way. Like I said, just place them a little bit farther to the left or right and you'll, you'll, you can just leave them on because I find it's easier to assemble everything uh, when there's still a little bit of tape to hold it in place. I'm just using some score tape to adhere my stabilizers. I'm just using two different widths to cover the entire width of the stabilizer. I don't actually think you need that much adhesive, there's not really any pull on them, but I just wanted to make sure they stay put. Now all of the three stabilizer pieces I cut out of white cardstock. And I'm just making sure that the curve of the stabilizer lines up perfectly with the curve of the ring and also is right between those stitch lines. Just adding all three of them. I'm actually pulling that one up because I didn't adhere it as accurately as I needed to. Because I think uh, for, for this kind of mechanism you really need to make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. I just left it in to, to show you because it's important because then you'll end up with a gap in the in the middle of the iris or it just won't work at all. So in this case I thought better safe than sorry. Now I'm just removing the washi tape because it was in the way uh, to fold the stabilizers over. So I'm just using my fingers to just pull everything to where it needs to be. And now it's time to add the tape to the stabilizers. Or the other side, I should say. And now I'm also adding some tape to the what is it called? The handle? <laughs> I don't really know what to call that. Um, for this you need to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the inside of with the curve of the inside ring and that it's close to but not overlapping the bottom stabilizer. You will create a little V shape between the stabilizer and the handle. And that is your mechanism to open the iris later. Now I'm just removing the, the backing sheet of my tape. And you want to wrap those stabilizers around loosely so that the mechanism can move. I found it was easiest to just place my, my finger or my nail um, where I want the, the stabilizer to stop and then just push back towards the outside of the ring. As you see me do here, I just place it down there first and then just push back and that gives the mechanism plenty of space to move. And there we have our iris. It's a bit hard to move when it's not attached to anything, but it works really, really well. Now I'm just adding some tape runner to add the decorative uh, piece to from the cover plate to the handle. There is a word for it, I just can't think of it, I'm sorry. 
I'm just using tape runner all over the front of the iris now. Making sure to avoid the inside mechanism. And now I'm just lining it up with the cloud background. And just pressing down to make sure it sticks really well. As you can see here, I flip over the backs of the sausage pieces that are sticking up. But those actually ended up causing me a bit of trouble. The, the edge of the circle that I glued down to the background was actually snagging on those. So for the cover plate, you can barely see them anyway. So I would just leave them flat. I later went in with a pair of tweezers to just flatten them out again. And then the mechanism worked perfectly. I also added two layers of foam squares. I added one thick or one regular foam square and one thin because the uh, otherwise the iris it, it would just be a bit more bulky in the middle and I didn't like that. So that was the perfect height for me and I just added it to the background. Now it's time to add my balloons. I'm just sprinkling them over my panel in an order I, that seemed fun to me. Just using liquid glue. I'm snipping off the one that's overhanging and now I'm just adding the strings. To me it was easiest to glue down the balloons first. But don't add any glue to the, the little bottom piece so that I can just stick the string of the balloon behind or I can just tuck it in there because it's hard to see where it will land on the card when you've already adhered it to the balloon. So this was just that way you can really place the string of the balloon exactly where you want it to be on the card. Just adding liquid, small dots of liquid glue. And now I'm just snipping off all of the excess. And for this one, I'm making sure to add the glue on the outside of the frame to make sure nothing gets stuck to the mechanism of the iris. And that's our card front mostly done. Now I'm just adding the little bows to the balloons. Off camera I added the little white highlights just also using liquid glue and now I'm just adding some clear sequins all over the background for some added sparkle. Now I'm just using some unicorn stickles to embellish the little white highlights and I realized that I really wanted one on the big balloon as well. So I just added that in and also used the stickles on top of that. And that finishes off my first Magic Iris card. I had so much fun playing with this die. It's such a cool feature to add to a card. I'm really looking forward to playing with it more. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. On screen I will link to two more videos that may interest you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.